My name is Dr. Sarah Myhill. Um, I'm speaking today for um, um, Life, the Basic Manual. And my special interest is in patients with chronic fatigue syndrome. And often they come to me in a state of despair. In fact, I have to say, during the early days of treating this, um, many of the patients were just grateful that I recognised that the condition existed and was sympathetic to their symptoms and their plight and it hadn't occurred to them that actually improvements could be made and that a cure was possible. <laughs> now, I never make any promises to any of my patients because um, 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 uh, uh, you know, that would be dishonest. But the point is, is that chronic fatigue syndrome is a condition with physical causes and physical treatments. And if we can identify those causes and treat those physical treatments, then they will get better. There's no reason why they shouldn't. It's like a car. You know, if you've got a car that's broken down, there's no point just changing the spark plug or just putting the right fuel in the tank or just, you know, um, uh, cleaning the air filters. You've got to do it all. And when you do do it all, patients get well. Now, of course, you don't see those people on social media. You don't see them um, um, uh, in the news and in the press because they're well. You know, they've had an illness, they've got over it, and they want to get on with their lives and do other things, which are much more interesting than rabbiting on about their illness, especially it's a British thing. You know, British people, oh, they don't like to talk about how ill they are. In fact, they disguise it. In fact, many of the ME patients who come and see me, they put on a great act, you know, that, uh, uh, and they, they dress up and they put makeup on and they, and, and, and they, they don't look too awful at all. But, you know, but, but they're coming to see me because obviously they have very serious uh, conditions. Um, one area that um, I haven't talked about is the use of thyroid hormones to treat fatigue syndromes. And as um, Dr. Gordon Skinner, um, he was a consultant virologist at Birmingham um, and he saw lots of patients with post-viral chronic fatigue syndrome because that's what virologists see. And he learned an awful lot about the treatment of fatigue syndrome with thyroid hormones. I went and sat in with him and he taught me a huge amount about the thyroid conditions in people with fatigues. Thyroid conditions in this country are extraordinarily badly treated. Doctors don't treat patients, they treat blood tests. There's only one bit of the blood test they look at which is the TSH, um, which is a measure of um, how the thyroid gland itself is responding to the pituitary and Almost invariably, that test is normal in patients with chronic fatigue syndrome. There are many ways in which you can be hypothyroid. And um, one, of course, is when the thyroid gland fails completely. It's usually an autoimmune condition. The levels of TSH rise, and yes, you'll get treated with thyroid hormones. But people with fatigue syndromes, they have a general suppression of the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. The hormonal system of our body is like an orchestra and the pituitary gland is the conductor of that endocrine orchestra and if it's not sending out the right information the thyroid gland will go down and the adrenal gland will go down and maybe other glands as well but thyroid and adrenals are major major players so what I when I see a patient with chronic fatigue syndrome I want to see the absolute level of thyroid hormones in their blood now the interesting thing about thyroid hormones is we have a reference range which pertains to the population but that is not the same as one's individual range. So I might so the reference range of the population is about should be about 12 to 22 picomoles per litre of thyroxine. Now, if a patient came to see their GP and was lucky enough to get a T4 and the result came back at 12.1, the GP would say, oh, fine, that's normal, you don't need treating. But that patient might feel an awful lot better running with a T4 of 22. In fact, Professor Sir Anthony Toft, who's an endocrinologist at Edinburgh, in the first edition of his book, um, The BMA Guide to Prescribing um, Thyroid Hormones, states some people do not feel well until their T4 is running at 30 picomoles per litre. So we need to know the absolute level of T4 in the blood. T4 actually as a hormone is pretty inactive. It has to be converted to T3 um, to be activated. And for that conversion, we need minerals like selenium and like iron and like zinc. So very often I see people who've got high levels of T4, but their T3 is on the ground. They are not going to get better until you give them some T3. And for many, that makes the world a difference. And then we have now another problem, which is thyroid hormone receptor resistance. Now we can't do a test for that. We have to diagnose it by exclusion. Now, let me jump sideways for a moment. We're now seeing epidemics of type 2 diabetes. Many doctors will call that insulin resistance. Why? 
the insulin is there. The insulin is present in high amounts, but they're still running high blood sugars. The insulin hormone isn't working. It's called insulin resistance diabetes. Now, those same people who have insulin resistance often have thyroid hormone receptor resistance as well. This is another important reason to do a low carbohydrate ketogenic diet and treating these patients because I suspect it gets around many of the problems of hormone resistance. But I now have an growing proportion of patients who only feel well when they're taking pure T3. Now a normal dose of T3 which would be considered physiological might be 25 to 40 micrograms a day. Some people don't feel well until they're on 150, 160, 170 micrograms of T3 daily. Now any endocrinologist would tell you, oh that's far too high a dose, you're going to give that person thyroid toxicosis. But guess what? Clinically they're normal, their pulse is normal, their blood pressure is normal, but they feel well. Their energy is back and restored. A lovely gentleman who came to see me, ooh, 10 years ago, I suppose. He was a top-class accountant, traveling the world, um, um, uh, very high-powered, commanding an enormous salary, developed chronic fatigue syndrome, and um, he came to see me, by which time he'd given up work, he was unable to look after his family, he had to sell his big house, downgrade, and so on. Anyway, he was one of those um, patients who responded really well to T3. We up the dose and up the dose, his health improved, his health improved. He's now back working as a world-class accountant, jetting all over the world, functioning at a very high le level. So cure is possible in all patients who have fatigue. Um, it's a question of asking the right questions, putting the right interventions in place, and seeing those interventions through to their logical conclusion. But there's no reason at all why anybody who's had fatigue shouldn't recover fully um, um, given the right treatments.